No, no, you can film here. I can film here. No problem. I'm media. I can film here. I can. I can film here. We have permission to film here. This is a permission to film in here. That right there is Qatari 5 0 detaining an American soccer fan at the Iran US match and being super expeditious and transparent about why this guy got targeted and pulled away from his game. He seems pretty cooperative. Why was he a threat? See any clues? Let's find out if you're right. Are you okay? I twisted my arm a little bit when I came up, but other than that, I'm fine. Okay. It was very aggressive. Yeah? Yeah. Why, do you think? Because of that one? So I went through security with this on. Security said it was fine. I talked to a gentleman. Sitting there, obviously, <laughs> I haven't been drinking, uh, and just sitting in a chair. They came up, so you have to take it off. I said, no, that's not true. And then uh, these gentlemen came up and fairly aggressively grabbed me, twisted me on, my arms back. Yeah, so if you haven't heard, rainbows aren't too welcomed in Qatar. It doesn't believe the LGBTQ plus community should exist under Allah, and it cracks down on non-binary behavior with jail time and conversion therapy because Qatar's a religious dictatorship. These are obvious human rights abuses, and they're being sports washed by FIFA. It's just sad to see, because in 2017, FIFA implemented human rights policy that obligates the governing body and everyone in the game to protect and promote human rights, you know? Following that just in June, you know, I remember the Pride Month symbols and it being displayed all over their social media accounts. But incredibly, it's not just Qatar bragging about the progress that's been made. FIFA has had the nerve to claim credit for it too. All the changes that have happened in this country in terms of human rights and workers' rights and so on, human rights would not have happened, or certainly not at the same speed, without the projectors of uh, the World Cup. Okay, corruption, Caillou. That is one hell of a fucking claim there. Because you cannot possibly argue FIFA deserves credit here. FIFA's evaluation of Qatar's bid had literally zero mentions of human rights. And sports washed by right-wing American media. I went on Fox News' YouTube channel. There were a total of zero stories about Qatar's dark side since the beginning of the tournament. But even worse, these organizations are reinforcing and encouraging the continued dehumanization of LGBTQ plus people. Sexual conduct between men is criminalized and can result in seven years in prison. And FIFA was not unaware of this. Sepp Blatter even joked about it just days after Qatar was awarded the tournament because when he was asked what advice he would give to gay fans who might want to travel to Qatar, this was his fun response. Then uh, I would say then that they should refrain from any sexual activities. <laughs> Little kids are losing their gender because they get stuffed in <laughs> classrooms with grooming teachers. I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite this hideous. Drag the kids to pride. A, quite frankly, I think all of us agree, a totally disgusting, inappropriate event. If I was a parent and my fifth grade daughter had had to sleep and shower in some kind of cabin at some summer camp that I paid money to send my child to, and there was a man calling himself a woman sleeping in her cabin, my husband would have beat him into the ground. And they're playing the long game, debasing themselves for money and access. Qatar's authoritarian tendencies may actually have been a deal sweetener because FIFA has long had a soft spot for autocrats. FIFA's former Secretary General, Jerome Valk, once said, I will say something which is crazy, but less democracy is sometimes better for organizing a World Cup. When you have a very strong head of state, that is easier for us organizers. And Fox Sports has exclusive English language media rights to cover the men's and women's World Cups through 2026, which explains the outright absence of any criticisms of Qatar or FIFA on Fox News and Fox Sports. And while the trifecta of government, commerce, and media all deflect blame and deny responsibility, and soccer fans are getting temporarily detained for supporting LGBTQ plus people, real members of this community in Qatar are hiding their identity or being punished like it's just another day of the week. It's like having a, um, a household with children that are domestically abused. And now you're going to have a fancy dinner party. People can, can come in, they can bring their kids, their kids can jump on the table 
and they can do everything that they want. The children that live there are going to be in the basement, quiet, behaving, and they can jump on the table like the other kids that visited because they will be punished in that household for doing it. So when you hear or see news stories about LGBTQ plus supporters getting arrested or dragged out of soccer matches for sporting a rainbow, recognize that one, that is peanuts compared to what real Qataris are facing because the cameras are on. And two, once the World Cup is over, Qatar will go right back to gender persecution from re-education to the death penalty. And the real stakeholders in exploiting this persecution, FIFA and Fox, potential drivers of positive change here, they want this to continue to happen. And that should sicken you. Hey guys, I'm back and ready to hear your thoughts on what I should talk about next. Let me know in the comments, try to keep the hope, and I'll see you next time.